imagine typing in Netflix and it says auto correct complete Netflix and then it stops and you hit enter and it just types in net. Hmm. That's weird. Um, it won't load if you type in like www.net. Nothing doesn't actually get you anywhere. <laughs> www.net isn't a website, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know what I kind of want to do? What's that? Please don't record. Oh, you're already recording this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I do explicitly take out things that you seriously don't want in the recording. <laughs> Please don't put on that I want to. That's, I will admit that's tempting. <laughs> <laughs> only in order to and that's the only reason I know it. I mean, that, that's, you can do, that's the only reason I, I can think of some other reasons. I mean, you can do most things with that you can do without. It's just there are just more logistics involved. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. How are you? Um, I mean, I'm okay, dude. My yeah, I'm worried you like have seemed a little bit stressed the past week. I've been a little bit stressed the past week. I'm sorry, man. And then my phone broke today. Like my phone was already broken. You mm-hmm. know, the screen was cracked, but then like it took its last bump before like the liquid crystal started leaking out like into the rest of the screen. And like, so like when I noticed it, like there was already a huge dead patch on like the bottom and like it wouldn't like it wouldn't even accept touch on the bottom, like say eighth of the screen. And then like the purple was spreading throughout and uh like i sent a quick message to like you and all well, to the main chat and then to so like i've killed my phone completely it's going to get worse throughout the day and i'm gonna have to get a new one after work yeah i didn't c- understand exactly i broke my ohoin <laughs> i like okay so like yeah I, I tried to type a message and like I couldn't, but thankfully, if I like put screen rotation on and put the phone like upside down and sideways, then the voice chat button still worked. So any messages between like th- any messages today before like six o'clock, I sent with voice chat. Are we ready? Oh, I, wish I suppose. I- Hey, Internet, welcome back to Highway 47. Tonight we are, um, are we Highway 47 Productions or Commentaries? I can't remember. We're um, Highway 47 Productions doing production. audio commentary. That's it. Yeah, thank you. You think, I mean, I came up with the name. You think I remember it. Uh, anyway, we are watching some Star Trek tonight. Uh, the Next Generation, as usual, for this point in our run. Uh, I'm Shaggy B here, like always, and with me is Draco Funk, the man. I'm Funky ec- Extra tonight. Funky Extra. Extra you're Funky. Fun- you're-, <laughs> <laughs> you're so funky you can't even talk. Uh, I had something I was going to say and it all came out wrong. <laughs> that's right. That's 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 how you know you got the funk. Get it? They always say don't fake the funk. You can always tell someone faking the funk when it makes sense. I guess. I got some coffee here, too. That's a good idea. That's a really good idea. I should have done that. Uh, Scrodrick is not with us tonight. He uh, he works third shifts, and this, this time around it's a weekend, So uh, and we record Friday nights usually, so he's not with us. But uh, He's here in spirit. Know, he's here in spirit, and also in, you know, something else. Funky form. Funky form. We have the funk of Scrodrick with us. <laughs> Which that would be really weird because neither one of us has seen him in months, and like, this is not, it's not going to what that could mean, uh, <laughs> right? So, Star Trek, um, Angel so, One, Angel One, and I'm the, sorry, my computer made a noise I didn't expect, so let me quiet that real quick. It's lucky episode 13. Yes, and it will be super lucky because I don't remember a thing about it, to be honest with you. Um, this will so far be our lowest, our second lowest rated, rated episode. That's perfect. 
Um, and I'm going by the IMDb rating, which has a rating of 5.7. I assume that's a 10 point scale, right? Yes. Our and last episode, it, Data Lore, was 7.7. 7. Has anything gone below 5 yet? Uh, I'm trying to remember what, um, what was Code of Honor. Cause I think that was episode three. Yeah, I think that was the lowest rated one. 5.2. Wow. So if Code of Honor was still better than half, like, <laughs> I, I kind of want to know what like a one rated TV show would be. Or maybe I don't want to know. I'm not sure. You know, leave a, if you know of a one rating TV show episode that in the IMDb rating, you know, let us know. Maybe we'll watch it and do a commentary. Absolutely. And if you know if it's on a streaming service, I mean, I you know, we'll 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 do it. I'll I mean I'll I'll call it right now. If it's something we can stream and, and we can have access to and do a commentary, we will do it. Maybe yeah. just one episode, but we'll do it. We'll do it all night. I'm not sure I can handle it all night. That's what the coffee's for, man. <laughs> Things will get a little funky after a while. Um <sighs> So, Angel One, this episode aired January 23rd, 1988, and it was the 13th episode. 23rd of January. Seems like an important day for reasons that I don't know. If you know why the 23rd of January <laughs> is important, please let us know. <laughs> Leave a comment. <laughs> Tell us what you were doing on January 23rd, 1988, or what anybody else was doing. What was Ronald Reagan doing? What was... I don't know. There's other people that were alive back then. Alan Alda, you know, he's a guy. Yeah, he's still alive. He is. He's doing pretty well. He uh, he was diagnosed with Park. Well, he was diagnosed a while ago with Parkinson's, but he uh, he just just sort of now announced it recently. Yeah. Um. But I, you know, I I wouldn't have known it from the the appearances I've seen him in the past couple of years. So, so that's that's good to see. Yeah. So run down how they're going to watch this with us. So we're watching this um, on the Netflix, but you can also watch it on the Hulu or the DVD or I'm sure there's some other streaming service. Is it, uh, is it available on YouTube, the YouTube video service? I don't believe so, but I'd have to check. I thought I saw that, but I could be wrong. If, well, you, if, might... if you know it is available on the YouTube streaming service, please leave it in the comments. <laughs> Leave a comment. Just leave comments, really. Just say anything. Preferably true things that aren't like defamatory and or don't give away secrets that we don't want people to know. Like, please don't post my address on YouTube. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to be on YouTube now. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, uh, the episodes are available through the YouTube streaming service for $1.99 each. Well, now they don't have to post a comment. You can still post a comment. I, I, it's fine. <laughs> anyway, if you are watching this on Netflix, when that little um, button comes up to skip the comments, don't press it. What you should do, though, is either hover your finger over the play button or your mouse or whatever. Your face. Yeah, whatever, whatever you can cause to trigger the start of this episode. And we're going to give you a five second countdown. And at the end of that, you should start it and you should put this recording either. Um, I have some I know some people who have been putting it on their phones and then watching it along with the episode. Uh, sometimes um, they split a pair of earbuds or they just let it play play it on their phone and then watch it through their TV, through their streaming device, either Roku, Fire Stick. Uh, what's the Google one? Chromecast. Chromecast. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have one of those. I use it daily. I don't, that's the one I don't have. Well, it, I like it, but that's another discussion. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to give the countdown or do you have something else? <laughs> um, I don't have anything else. Cause I don't remember a thing about this episode. Well, I do. Cool. Do you have a question? Do I have a question? Do you have a question? I, I, I guess I could have a question. All right. What's your question? Um, can we pause here? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I was going to come up with something, and I just realized that what I was going to, what was about to come out of my mouth would probably, I need to make <laughs> this not be terrible. That would be wise. <laughs> <sighs> That's going on the recording. I need to make this not be terrible. <laughs> um, so, like, in your house, did your mom wear the pants? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no, uh, she didn't. Um, I think. Well, okay. <laughs> As as you're aware, my my parents had a complicated relationship that ended uh, when I was I was still a fairly young child. Um, but but my mother never never sought or accepted um, like a, a head of the household kind of role. Mm. Um, she certainly like when when the need arose for her to you know step up and and you know manage finances or make decisions or whatever she she was capable of doing it and did but she um she certainly she she would always defer and then and it, it took me very much by surprise when i grew up and i became an adult and and she suddenly started deferring on opinions to me you know in in her mind i sort of became the man of the family and uh so she's very much not the type to do that what about you uh my mom was always really on top of things, and um, I was in a sim- very similar situation. She just kind of, uh, she always made sure things were done and was always kind of like, everything was always taken care of. That makes sense. Do you think that's, I mean, do you think that there is a, do, do you think that, uh, what am I trying to say here? Is Is, is, is there a correct role for the 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 mother figure or the the woman of the house quote unquote the matriarch maybe that's a good word yeah is 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 there a correct way for a matriarch to be in that sort of sense or is that is that something that should be flexible let's find out let's find <laughs> out all right if if we're going to learn anything from star trek today i guess it's going to be what women are for maybe uh that's dangerous. I Data wow. already did that. Data. <laughs> <laughs> you ready to start? Yeah. <laughs> We're getting into scary territory here. All right. This is Star Trek The Next Generation Season 1, Episode 13, Angel 1. And we are hitting the play button as soon as my clock stops freaking out. And there it is in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yo mama. Since we were talking about how our mothers are. Yeah. Yeah. Seven year overdue. Yeah, they're just now getting around to like looking into it. Like, oh, you guys heard from the Odin? Oh, no, not since. Oh, not since I guess Charlie was born. How's old, how old is Charlie? And Charlie walks up like, Mom, she doesn't like me anymore. Sparsely populated with intelligent life forms, it is similar in technological development to mid 20th century Earth. Kind of like being ruined at home. Assuming any of the survivors made it this far. Admittedly, it is the closest planet to the Odin. To travel the distance we did in two days at warp one would have taken the Odin escape pod five months. Five months. Why did they go warp one if it took two days? I mean, they haven't went to look for this freighter for seven years. Why be in a hurry now? I guess that's true. They want to sneak up on him so they don't see him coming. Any other pertinent information before we reply? Angel One has evolved into a constitutional oligarchy. It is governed by a parliamentary body consisting of six elected mistresses and headed by a female they refer to as the elected one. It sounds like my own six mistresses. Six of them. Hey, Worf had a line. Hey, he's in this episode. He is. You know who else is in this episode? Counselor Troy. Yeah. She also had a line. Can I just go back for a second and point out the way Worf delivered that line? Like, he literally walked up to, like, a specific spot, said the line, and then, like, very robotically turned and walked away. Like, that's called blocking. 
Who the hell directed this episode? <laughs> Who directed this episode? Yeah. I mean, that would be Michael Ray Rhodes. Huh. He directed it as Michael Rhodes. Did he direct any more episodes? Possibly. A brief visit will be tolerated. They've broken off transmission. Ever feel like you're not really wanted? Ever feel like you state the obvious? I mean, that's kind of what he does. Kind of. Hey, don't hit that skip intro button. Man, it's so shiny. I know. Uh, no, he did not direct any more episodes. This was the only one. Well, I think we've started to see why. He did direct one episode of Baywatch. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise. Hmm. It's continuing mission to explore strange new worlds. I'm not sure what to say about that. <laughs> new life and new civilizations. What else did he do? No one has gone before. He did direct several episodes of China Beach. I have never heard of China Beach. Really? Really? He, he directed four episodes. Hmm. My mom used to watch that all the time. Oh, wow. Is it anything like Baywatch? N no. I mean, okay. I guess so if you imagine Baywatch is like a more serious version of MASH and they're all like in Vietnam. <laughs> And well, not on the beach. It, okay. seems, it looks like he mostly directed one episode of a TV show. The most is like four. Hmm. So, not the kind of guy who gets called back after doing a gig. He got a lot of gigs, just not a lot of repeat gigs. Hmm. Well. And uh, here we are. Here we are. Angel One. Where are you fellas off to? Our ski instructor has it scheduled for the Danubian Alps, sir. I'll save us some deep powder. No problem, sir. The holodecks have all you'd ever need. Hey, they're children. <laughs> children. <laughs> Doing children things. The transporter <sighs> chief has to be that kid's dad because they're the only two Asian people on the ship. Uh, except for the Japanese engineer who got fired. We'll do our best to make a good impression, Captain. Energize. Captain's log supplemental. Our away team has beamed down to an unusual matriarchal society where the female is as aggressively dominant as the male gender was on Earth hundreds of years ago. Here, the female is the hunter, the soldier, larger and stronger than the male. An arrangement considered most sensible and natural. I am Beata, the elected one of Angel One. Representatives of the Starfleet Enterprise, do you wish to petition? We do. We have reason to hope that survivors from the damaged Federation freighter may be marooned on your planet. I mean, they showed up like seven years ago, did you notice? We were in a hurry to find them or anything. Even a world as remote as Angel One has heard of Starfleet. Searching the galaxy for survivors seems a petty task for one of their mighty vessels. That's why it took seven years. Consider even one survivor petty. That's why it only took seven years. Is this man implying that we put a lesser value on life than you do? Not at all. Our discovery of the freighter was unexpected. We have a duty to investigate. Seven years later. And if you find any survivors, what then? We would take them with us and see that they were reunited with their families. Oh, we'd take these strangers at their word. Good question. What reason could we possibly have to deceive you? Another good question. Are there survivors from the freighter Odin on your planet? I'm not prepared to answer. Yet. See to their comforts. Go get him, Tiger Man. 
You've never seen Buck Rogers, have you? No, I haven't. <laughs> Costume designer was like, it's men so we can show their nipples. You will remain here until summoned. I think I've seen lamps like that white thing before. And the thing on the wall. Why is she using a medical tricorder? Undoubtedly, there are survivors from the Odin on this planet. Dun, dun, dun. wonder if they have that device that the Ferengi stole. <laughs> That's why the Ferengi bought those brain spheres. He said, don't look, Data. Yeah, I was about to say, Data immediately looks out the window and sees problems. Insurance. Romulan battle cruisers have been detected near one of our border posts. Ooh, Romulans. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> children being children. Report, Mr. Crusher. We finished our ski lesson, sir. And it kind of just happened. On the Enterprise, Mr. Crusher, nothing just happens. What is that smell? Mm, yes. Slightly reminiscent of Night Blooming Throgni, Captain. Throgni. Night Blooming Throgni. Oh, Throgni grows well in Minsk, I guess. I don't smell anything. A little congested. The snow. Don't let this just happen again, Mr. Crusher. That's right. Ah, his uniform's dry. <laughs> <laughs> Man, those space fabrics are amazing. Come on, Data. I did that once in a store when I was a kid, and my eyes burned for like two hours. Like, it really hurt. And it was like a citrus scent, so it was really acidic. I'm kind of surprised I'm not blind, actually. <laughs> it has never encountered perfume before. Is something used to stimulate or enhance sexual pleasure. Jar's like, uh, he doesn't need that. Enjoyment of sex. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I have a thing for 10W30. <laughs> now that they're not looking. You claim you intend to remove these survivors from our world. Are you prepared to give your solemn word on that? We are. You should know that the vote was not unanimous. Some of those among us are suspicious. Yet the majority feel we have no choice but to trust you. We don't understand the source of your misgivings, mistress, but we appreciate your faith in us. Make certain that faith is not misplaced. There are four survivors from the ship you call... Don't look indignant in front of the aliens. All male. Mm -hmm. Their leader is a man who calls himself Ramsey. If you're Gordon Ramsey? To us, <laughs> we'll have them off your planet. I'm crushing this! He landed and immediately started, like, cussing about all their food. Why are they in hiding? Because they're fugitives on Angel One. And the quicker we get rid of them, the better. When these men came to us seven years ago, they accepted our hospitality quickly enough. But they gradually became restive. Started making unreasonable demands. Went against the natural order. They wanted to leave the toilet seats up. Technology of the Enterprise, <laughs> we might be able to find these men. I assumed as much. But be Wanted some goddamn peace and quiet on an evening once in a while. Wanted them to stop telling every single detail about their day, am I right, guys? Because women talk a lot and men don't. Because that's the joke. And... Uh oh. Wesley and one of his friends have contracted some form of respiratory ailment. A respiratory ailment? A respiratory ailment? I 
a respiratory ailment. I've isolated the 12 students who were on the Quazulu 8 field trip. How contagious is it? Still running tests. The key is to figure out how the virus is transmitted. Uh, yeah. That would, that would determine its contagion. Well, keep with it, Doctor. Starfleet has very important business for us as soon as the away team returns. I don't fancy the idea of my crew being infected. Uh, ah, oh, he's infected, isn't he? Yep. It's only transmitted through snow. Data was the best way to go about finding Ramsey. Did he just smell his finger? Mm hmm. can isolate something unique to the Odin survivors, perhaps an element not otherwise found on Angel One. We can utilize the Enterprise scanners. Mr. Data will need access to your library. Our library is far too sophisticated for a man to comprehend. <laughs> I am an android, Mr. Uh, har, har. Though anatomically, I am a male. <laughs> I'm fully functional in every way. Maybe you could She's looking down at his anatomy right now. Trent, see to the android's needs. Bridge to Captain Picard. Go ahead, Lieutenant. The away team requests that we scan the planet's surface for traces of platinum. 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 Shouldn't they go into a polar orbit? Search pattern initiated now. Oh yeah, they're they're breaking their regular orbit and going to a polar orbit. I guess. Oh, well, that is a cool lamp when it's lit up. I like that. This was delivered for you. Good. It's for my meeting with Beata. You're not going to wear that. Of course. Part of this mission is diplomatic. I have requested an audience with the head of state, and I will honor her by wearing indigenous apparel. Hasn't he been, like, meeting with the head of state the entire time? <laughs> yeah, if you know what I mean. Why, what is this attitude? On Kibatris, I had to wear furs to meet with the leadership council, and on Armist 9, I wore feathers. And on Ryza? This objection doesn't have anything to do with the fact that Beata is a woman, and an attractive one, does it? In New Orleans, I didn't wear a top. This is quite unnecessary, Doctor. I'm fine. You're infected with the virus, Captain. In my opinion, you are no longer physically able to effectively command this vessel. That is ridiculous, Doctor. I'm an away team down there in less than friendly territory. And in addition, I have an appointment with several Romulan battle crews. Battle cruise. <laughs> Battle cruise. Is that an order, Doctor? Yes. I think I may sneeze. Uh oh. A Klingon sneeze? Only kind I know. <laughs> Everybody get ready. You have command until further notice. Please make the proper ship's log entries. Aye, sir. He's like, oh, oh, crap. Yeah, it's a shame nobody on that ship outranks him. Yeah, he's like what? A lieutenant junior grade? Yeah. Indicate a platinum trace. Should I notify the away team? Make it so. Gulp. You know, at least it's tailored well. What do you think? <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, well, I gotta say, it's uh, kind of sexy. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant. Actually, it feels quite comfortable. Mm. <laughs> <sighs> How handsome you look. Thank you. The Enterprise reports a possible location for Mr. Ramsey and the other survivors. So soon, huh? I'm impressed. I'm suspicious. You don't believe me? Not yet. I'm impressed and I'm you suspicious. Had. You had your <laughs> opportunity to object, Ariel. You were in the minority. After seven years, the great ship Enterprise comes to repatriate a small group of insignificant people. Mistress Ariel, I hear the words, but not the sincerity. 
You should listen more carefully. With your man ears. Yeah. You probably just hear football and beer, am I right? Like, ugh. All I can hear is your tits. I'll have to edit that out. By all means. <laughs> <laughs> If I recall, you had a gesture of goodwill you wished to give to me. Oh, yes, I do. We recovered the survivors. Are you suggesting that the women in your party are incapable of accomplishing that task without the help of a man? Not at all. Lieutenant Yar and Counselor Troy are completely qualified. You're very generous with your praise. Inform them that you will remain here with me. Riker is about to go where Data's already been before. Riker to Lieutenant Yar. This is Yar. In the interest of diplomatic relations, I'll remain here with Mr. Spiata while you conduct our search. Commander? You have your instructions. He's going to be working on his diplomatic That's relations. That's right. They have much to discuss. Set phasers to stun. <laughs> I wish they weren't necessary. That's exactly what Riker's doing. <laughs> Mr. Ramsey and his men are dangerous. Lieutenant Yard Enterprise. Go ahead, Doctor. Three to beam to the location of that platinum trace, Jordy. Coordinates set. Energize. I feel like the pra the platinum trace would be like a good name for like a lesbian bar. Based on nothing, really. I'm in no way qualified to, uh, you know, make that decision, but... Oh, hey, it's the thumbnail for the episode. I've been expecting you. Is that MacGyver? It kind of looks like him. I really want it to be MacGyver. I, I really do, too. Forgot the bridge. <laughs> what? The Forge here. Status report. 82 more reported cases of the virus, sir. Dr. Crutcher has converted the holodeck into an isolation ward. Yes, use the holodeck, not not like a cargo bay. Well, no recent contact, sir. But I, have I mean, they could make like a whole like crap load of chicken soup or something. Threat to our neutral zone outpost. Keep me advised. You have the bridge until Commander Riker returns. Engineering reports, computer map. Nah. I like the echo they put on that. <laughs> Worf. I'm sure half the ship it's like a giant blob of sludge covering the entire console now. <laughs> Engineering the bridge. The forge here. The computer won't accept the variant climate controls. On my way. No, no. There are people to do that job now. The forest engineering. Lieutenant Wong knows that system. I'm sure she'll be able to resolve all problems. Or Thanks for the advice. I'm going to miss you, man. <laughs> We're like bros, man. <laughs> they did put a lot of like echo and reverb on that. Yeah, they did. Actually, it was quite simple. Angel 1 has no platinum. How did that happen? Um, I don't know. Wait, that's not. That's not MacGyver. No, it's not. He does kind of look like him. He could be a stunt double. What is it that you think that you're rescuing me from? My shipmates and I have all taken wives. A few even have children. You can't rescue a man from a place that he calls his home. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Why were you so hesitant at first to tell us about the Odin survivors? Because Ramsey and his men are anarchists. I had to make sure you weren't here to fuel... They're into punk rock. They wear leather. They've been known to mosh sometimes. Yeah, it's Gordon Ramsey's anarchist cookbook. ...interfere the domestic affairs of other societies. But you can interact. Of course. Otherwise, how can we learn? So, 
the head of state is meeting yes. with Riker on a bed to society. conduct diplomatic relations. Well, in our society, it is the men who are the fortunate ones, enjoying all life has to offer. This is a really, I have to say, like, <clears throat> like watching this through like the lens of, of the present day and sort of the zeitgeist about gender issues. It, it hits a little harder. Like now that I, that I have some memories about this episode since I've seen it again, it, it, it hits a little harder now than it did 10, 15 years ago. I think. Mm -hmm. How about like 30 years ago? Wow. This episode's 30 years old. It, yeah, it is. And and a few months. Yes, I find it very attractive. You attract me like no man ever has. It's not my it's the chest hair. To seduce or be seduced by the leader of another world. It's not the reason. No, it's not. Is this like the galactic equivalent of the 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 videotape of peeing on the horses in Moscow? Probably. Uh oh. Literally, did lock your door. Yeah, put a sock on it or something. You know. Uh oh. Waist up. Waist up. Okay. Compliments of the USS Enterprise. Called an Albany meditation crystal. Boom! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would call it a bakelite crystal. Five months on a rescue pod, no bigger than this room, is an eternity I hope none of you will ever have to face. Luckily, I was able to MacGyver the engine to get us here just a little bit faster with yeah. some duct tape and a sock I found. I didn't want to use the phaser, so I took it apart and I used the energy cell to fashion a warp core. There's no votes. There's no opinions. There's no respect. None of which is your concern any longer, Mr. Ramsey. Call the others in, please. It's time to leave. Despite their problems, Lieutenant, we happen to like it here on Angel One. We're not going anywhere. But Mistress Beata... Mistress Beata, be damned. Her wish is not my command, and neither is yours. You can't force us to go. Mr. Ramsey is correct, Counselor. The Odin was not a starship, which means her crew is not bound by the Prime Directive. If he and the others wish to stay here... There is absolutely nothing we can do about it. You could stun them and beam them up. I mean, there is that. I mean, the men don't need votes or opinions, right? Yeah. Rich the sick bay. How are you doing, doctor? We have more sick than we do beds. So far, I've been forced to confine over 300 to their private quarters. We're going to be seriously undermanned if we're forced to engage the Romulans in battle. Uh. Romulans are your problem, Lieutenant. Trying to find an inoculant is mine. This virus mutates every 20 minutes. Like clockwork. But we haven't had any fatalities. Yet. I'm just waiting for the next mutation. This continues. There'll be no one left to run the ship. If this continues, Lieutenant LaForge. Nobody will be healthy enough to care. Yard to Enterprise. If only there were another starship somewhere in the Federation. Prepare to beam three to our previous location, Jordy. After regrouping with Commander Riker, we'll return to the ship. I suggest you make that on the double township. We have a real medical emergency brewing up here. One third of the crew is down, and the latest information from the neutral zone outpost is that more Romulan vessels are converging on that area. I'll inform the commander. So you're going to go there alone? That's Looks a good idea. Before we go, you said you were expecting us. Why? I can't answer that. We wish you well, Mr. Ramsey. Energize. 
Yeah, turn their back on him so he can't see you go. Uh-oh. Oh. oh. It's Ariel. Oh. That's why she didn't want them to go. Now, that is one point where if the genders were reversed, that scene would never happen. Well, that, that outcome would never happen. The man wouldn't be in hiding and be so glad they're gone, those scary foreigners. Like, I'm saying that as far as, like, a narrative. If somebody was writing the story, that wouldn't happen. Yeah. She's about to possess your object, if you know what I'm saying. Uh-oh. Enter. Her hair is still perfect. It's so important you find it necessary to intrude upon my privacy. They have returned, mistress, but without Ramsey or the others. Your advanced technology has proven inadequate? What happened, Tasha? Mr. Ramsey and the other survivors refused to leave. You gave me your solemn word. I'm sorry. There's nothing else we can do. I'm sorry as well. Uh -oh. Shoot him. Since you refused to take them with you, I am left with no choice. But to sentence them all to death. Uh oh. Death by Snoo Snoo. Yay! Oh. Oh. Yay! Yay. Aww. Aww. Come. Starfleet issue thermos. There are a lot of topless guys in this episode. It looks horrible. Tastes worse. Yeah. Absolutely guaranteed to make you feel better. Jack Daniels. Best acting in the episode so far. Are you wearing cologne? Like something I smelled earlier, something clean up. Lieutenant Wolf and I detected the same scent when we bumped into your son and at the hollow deck. It's the first sign of infection. That smell. That's how the virus travels. Yeah. An airborne particle whose sweet scent inspires deep inhalation. And once inside the body, it comes that damn virus. I have work to do. Wow. A theory 400 years old. Excuse, Doctor. What's the latest on the Enterprise's medical situation? Oh, you know, blood pressure's a little high, but uh, overall... The oh, wait. Ship. Attempts to develop an inoculum have so far ended in failure. Lieutenant LaForge still has bridge command... At what point the would the Enterprise be quarantined? Yeah, what about the entering the neutral zone? I would think right about now. Reports a contingent of seven Romulan battle cruisers within sensor range. The USS Berlin has answered the distress call. However, should hostilities erupt, both the outpost and the starship will be outgunned. It is felt that the Enterprise's presence in the area will be a vital show of force. Some show of force. The Enterprise could fly an autopilot. But with that virus knocking down our crew, we're going to be in sorry shape if things turn ugly. I love that he looked at everybody as though he hadn't thought of that. It doesn't feel right to leave while Beata is determined to execute those people. She has to find them first. Ramsey and his bunch have been fugitives for years. I suspect he's pretty good at evading capture. Uh-oh. Something's wrong. Before you go back to your ship, there's something I want you to see. Can't punch MacGyver in the shoulder like that. We were no harm to anyone. Why did you tell them where to find us? You brought this upon yourself. You and the traitor. 
One does not need the technology of the Enterprise to follow Mistress Ariel, sneaking out to warn her husband. Uh-oh. Let her stand with him now. That guy's like, yeah. Protect yeah. We will die together. Check out that futuristic ballpoint pen. Those futuristic pink slips. Society, and yet you resort to execution advanced to like 20th century earth I don't expect you to understand why because i'm only a man you'll accomplish nothing with that attitude that man maybe attitude. smile maybe smile once in a while you know wear some nice shoes do a little makeup some perfume mr spiata like a klingon scent if you had an alternative to the execution of ramsey and his followers would you take it? Is that not the way of an advanced society? Then let us meet with the men from Odin one last time. Let me try to convince them to leave here with us. Will you also include those from this world who unwisely choose to follow Ramsey and his group? Yes. We'll beam them all up. I mean, my ship is... Uh... Yeah, it'll practically be a death sentence. Yeah. Because of the horrible plague. Yeah, the plague ship. That's why. That's the word I was looking for. Plague, yes. A funky plague. It spreads via the funk. In fact. Yeah. We're prepared to take your entire group with us. That's very kind of you. But we're stupid, so we're just going to stay and die. But we're not going. That's what I thought. Come on, MacGyver, you can break him out of there. Haven't you been paying attention, Ramsey? You're scheduled to be executed tomorrow. You don't want to die. But I'd rather be dead than be a Chevy owner. Wait, that's the wrong bullshit cause. There's no time to debate the issues. You're going with us whether you choose to go or not. Excuse me, Commander. Removing any of these people against their will would be a violation of several Starfleet regulations, not the least of which would be the Prime Directive. I realize that, Mr. Data. I'd rather face a court-martial than live with the guilt of leading these people to their death. Commander Riker to the Enterprise. This is the Enterprise. Crusher here. Must be worse up there than we thought. Doctor, where's Lieutenant LaForge? He's right here, but he's in bad shape. Uh-oh. Modify the transporter room. I have 14 to beam up. I can't allow it. This virus is totally out of control. Launch a shuttle. Put him there. Doctor, these people are facing their death down here. They might be facing the... Put them all... Keep them all on the sorcerer. Sorcerer, sorcerer. I can't talk. On the what now? Put all the plague people on the saucer section. You know, there's like two starships up there. That's true. Not likely. You're going back there alone. I want you to get the Enterprise into the neutral zone before it's too late. Yeah. By yourself, Data. Show those Romulans who's boss. Standing by to beam up. Data's never been inf infected by some sort of biological thing. Yeah, it definitely won't happen this time. I don't know, Deanna. He did. Oh, daytime. Looks a little bit like Asheville, North Carolina. The city does. Mistress Beata invite you to witness this morning's reaffirmation of Angel One's moral imperative. Is that the civilized word for murder on this world? You send Mr. Spiata our regrets. It wouldn't be murder, it'd be capital Enterprise punishment. Not look fondly upon you. Enterprise... Uh, depending on your perspective, that could be murder. Here. Riker here. Data, I gave you direct orders to get to the neutral zone immediately. Explain the delay. To be precise, Commander, you ordered me to reach the neutral zone before it is too late. And the USS Berlin can safely withstand a Romulan attack. 
deducted our time to destination at maximum warp speed. That leaves Dr. Crusher 48 minutes to develop an inoculant to the virus. Which means there's still time for us to do something. 48 minutes. Uh, 47, sir. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Perhaps. Maybe it's 46. We don't really know. He's like, yeah, I did. Second thought, Trent. We would be honored to witness your moral imperative in action. Yay, they're all coming to the party. We have determined that the heretical teachings of Ramsey and his followers are inconsistent with harmonious life on Angel One. Our patient efforts to silence revolutionary voices have failed. So she's the head of the whole planet, right? Therefore, we are left Apparently, yeah. With the most final alternative. Boom! Oh. <laughs> I thought their technology was more equivalent to 20th century Earth. I mean, that could just be a really, really strong microwave. Compassion. Your deaths will be swift and painless. Mr. Spiatis, before we see living examples of your compassion, may I speak? Is this a plea for leniency? Nothing of the sort. As the governing body of Angel One, you're entitled to execute your laws. I just want to practice some diplomatic relations one more time. Make your point so we can proceed with this unpleasant business. When you spoke of the prisoners, you used the term revolutionary. Indeed, death has been known to stop revolutions. But I suspect it's not a revolution that Angel One is hoping to stop. It's evolution. Mr. Ramsey... And you can't teach none that evolution in my schools. ...of dissent that are rippling through your planet. Their presence here merely reinforced the change in attitudes between men and women. That was already well underway. They became symbols around whom others who shared their views could gather. You may eliminate the symbols, but that does not mean death to the issues which those symbols represent. No power in the universe. I mean, Matthew Shepard was just buried like in a national cemetery recently. Be warned. Slow zoom in. The execution of Mr. Ramsey and his followers may elevate them to the status of martyrs. Martyrs cannot be silenced. Because they're already dead. They can only be outlawed. And defamed. And slandered. What? It didn't work? Crap. We will adjourn to consider your words. Move out of the death doorway, man. Like, back up. We've, we've seen that your balls are huge. You can... You don't have to stand there anymore. You can go somewhere else. You can walk a little. I don't know if it was enough. Change your pants. Bingo? The dog? Bingo? I failed to see the relevance, Doctor. Is that not a reference to an ancient Earth game? Two minutes. It's also a reference to success data. One minute fifty. I've got the inoculant. Excellent, Doctor. We still have 17 minutes left. I will inform the away team immediately. Enterprise to Riker. 
We are now ready to have you beamed up, Commander. Beta, Ramsey and the prisoners are with us in the Great Hall. I want you to lock in the transporter and prepare to evacuate the entire group. But for now, stand by. Understood, Commander. Standing by. Standing by. After careful consideration, this legislature has voted to stay the execution of the prisoners. Their children will be returned to them immediately. Do not rejoice prematurely. Ramsey and his followers are to be exiled to a distant and unpopulated region. Which is what they wanted in the first place. Difficult there, with little time left for revolutionary or evolutionary upheaval. As some have observed, we may not be able to stop evolution, but perhaps we can reduce it to a slow crawl. Like monkeys crawl out of trees. You telling me that I'm one of them? <sighs> Why aren't there any fossil proofs of, like, human evolution? Wait, wrong button. No! Oh, oh, oh. Why do they go stand in the death chamber? Riker likes to live on the edge. Never know if he's going to be beamed up or split into a million pieces. Slowly, but yes. Oh, didn't give Tasha a line. That should sound like tink tink. Somebody needs to get him some cough drops. Ricola. We have a call to pay on the Romulans, Captain. Is that copyrighted? Probably. The neutral zone. Warp six. Coordinate set. Don't they need to be going at maximum warp? No, only if they left like a few minutes later. I'm sure they have a fun time in the neutral zone. <laughs> Doing all sorts of fun party tricks with the Romulans. Yeah. Balancing beer bottles on the nose of a warbird. Not a warbird, a battle cruiser. That's true. Kind of wonder what battle cruisers look like. Romulan battle cruisers? Yeah. I mean, they're the ones in, like, Nemesis. I think those are the... just cruisers. Oh, okay. I don't know. Romulan battle cruisers from the original series were actually just the Klingon well, ships. That's a good point. <laughs> I remember that. Like, we can't afford any more ship models. Well, that, that they formed an alliance and they're using the same technology. Okay. Yeah, that, that's how well, it goes. Exactly. I'm really glad that episode's over. Yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna make up for it. The next episode is actually one of my favorite episodes from the first se first season. Which one's that? One one zero zero oh, one yeah. zero zero one. That is a really good one. I really like that episode. Anyway, any thoughts? Final thoughts? Yeah. Well, hey, yeah. What are yours? Uh, <laughs> yep, that's mine. You too. know, they tried to. I, I know they were trying to do something, but. I think it was just executed really, really poorly. It really was. And I, I feel like the, the actress who played Beata. Okay. Well, it's not just her. Like she got the most screen time of any unique character. And by unique, I mean, you know, somebody who we don't see all the time to make up for this, but just a better director. <laughs> you know, I don't like, I honestly, I, I look at this guy and I think he was, I'm, I'm, I have, no basis to base this on. He's like the guy in TV, like he, he'll direct episodes, but he doesn't really want to. But, you know, okay. if, if they need somebody and they're in a pinch, you know, it's better than thinking. I think that's a little bit better than saying, you know, he gets a gig and then they don't ever hire him back. Yeah. And, and I was kind of thinking that earlier, too. Um, I mean, I saw some I saw some good things he did do. But it wasn't it wasn't all terrible, but, you know, there's just like there's 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 some basics, right? Like like handling actors, 
you know, like get, getting the actors to perform rather than rather than, you know, walk up to the camera, say a line, walk away from the yeah, camera. This felt really, really forced. It did. It 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 really felt like. You know, like an elementary school play. <laughs> in, in the way it was executed. I mean, obviously the actors did, you know, they're, they're professional actors and they did, they did a good job with what they were given, but just like, they weren't really given. Exactly. You know, nobody was, nobody was set up in positions where they could work. Nobody was, it, it just, it just felt so, so artificial the whole yeah. way through. <sighs> the pacing was weird. Like, like Jordy LaForge did not act like Jordy LaForge ever. Yeah. You know, we got like one or two of his little jokes at the beginning. Like that's, that's one thing that, you know, LeVar Burton did really well with that character throughout the whole series was I felt like Jordy LaForge felt more like his own person than anybody else did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and he didn't, he didn't get a chance to show that at all in this episode. It was all like, it was all just like delivering lines. And, and there were, there were points where he would like have to acknowledge something and he would like, like it, it's like they used the take where he wasn't sure whether to take the cue or not, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and I just, you can't, you know, they should have made a big, bigger deal of his first time being in command. Absolutely. There's an episode a couple later where he's in command of the ship and a bunch of other stuff happens. And it's like really significant and a big deal. And, I had forgotten about this one because that one feels like his first time commanding the ship. And at this time he's just kind of like, uh, okay, I'll do it. I guess that's okay. You know who they're going to put in command the next episode. Who's that? Wesley. Oh yeah. <laughs> Nothing will go wrong. Yeah. We get to see how well that turns out. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time. We sure will. Thanks for watching with us. Highway 47 and production. That's right. That's us. And we're signing off. We'll see you around the bend.